Hey everybody, today I've got something a bit special. Just arrived today in the mail. Purchased it on eBay. It's a Coleman 530 stove. It's a civilian version of the World War II Coleman 520 stove. It looked like it was in very good condition for its age. We'll do a complete tear down and maintenance. We'll put it back together. We'll test it out. We're going to jump right into it. Let's get started. Start by removing the outer aluminum casing, which is in very good condition. The nickel plating looks very good, very mild wear. I see no dents. The bottom looks good. I don't see any causes for worry. No rust or heavy pitting. The rails that hold up the top look good. The chain for the gas cap is on here. There is no funnel or wrench on this one. I'm going to have to pick that up. Everything seems to turn freely. Nothing is stuck. The pump moves about, and if I put my finger over, it seems to have resistance, pressurized resistance, so that's a good sign. These all unfold for the pot. These are all in good condition. And the burner is slightly off-center, as we see. This could easily be very gently bent to the middle. The top aluminum pot is in very good condition only having a small dent right over here that could easily be knocked out. The bottom aluminum pot, also in very good condition. This one has no dents. We can see where the wrench fits to create a pot handle on this one is in good condition as well. The bottom pot, also in good condition. Just going to very quickly flex the burner back to center before we do anything else. And that looks about even. And that concludes our inspection. Let's get started. Going to use a long and fitted screwdriver as to not mess up these screws. Using some sort of loosening agent if necessary, breaking the tension on the four screws that hold the top of this stove. Only once all four are loosened, they could all be safely unscrewed. Then the top could be lifted off and put off to the side. I put these screws back in the bottom for safekeeping. With a 916, I will loosen this nut to separate the burner. Does just get started, then I'll loosen it with my fingers. Raising the cleaner to the topmost position allows me to remove the cleaner tip from the unit. I then lower it back down. With a small fitted flathead screwdriver, I remove the screw holding the pump onto the unit. This in turn allows the whole pump mechanism to slide right out. Just pulling up gently releases everything. With a 3 8 wrench, I loosen the nut that holds the cleaning lever on. As I turn it, it moves up and down until it becomes disengaged. Then the whole thing releases. A fitted screwdriver is used to remove the screw that holds on the knob for the fuel flow. There's also a plate with a decal that holds on. As I flip it over, the block for the cleaner will fall out. Put that off to the side. Next, I'm going to unscrew the gas cap. With a vise set up on the bench with soft jaws, I'm going to use that nut that's still on there to secure the unit and then gently twist to loosen it from the canister. Once it's loose, of course, I could then remove it from the vise and continue unscrewing it by hand. And this will separate the valve assembly from the tank. Use a 516 to loosen the fuel pickup from the valve assembly, and then unscrew it by hand. As we look inside the tank, we see there are only minor deposits and surface rust. Nothing too bad. We're just going to flush it out, see how much we can remove. I don't think this is going to be an issue. We're not going to use any bolts or anything like that. Just a quick flush. For this, I'll be using white gas with a funnel so I don't make a mess. And pour some in. What I want to do though in the beginning is I'm going to shake it up a bit, but I also want to turn it towards where the pump is. I just want to see if anything is going to get through the check valve. So I'm just sort of shaking it towards the direction of the check valve, seeing what comes of it, adding considerably more, laying it towards the check valve, waiting for it to leak if the check valve had failed, but I don't see anything coming through the check valve. It seems good. So now I'm just shaking for the purpose of agitation. Place a coffee filter into the funnel, into a plastic container, then pour the contents of the container into the funnel. We'll wait a minute or so for all the naphtha to filter through. We'll see what we collected on the first go around. This will be done with more naphtha, shaken more vigorously, 
We'll check on the result. The filtered naphtha is poured right back in with the funnel, used over and over again during this cleaning process. Eventually a second filter is used when the first one was too filthy. Subsequent cleaning process captures more and more releasing particulate matter. We could see what was caught in the two filters. It's like a fine powder for the first couple of them. On the bottom of the filter, in the second filter, we saw more larger chunks that were released. Either way, it's all gone and we're ready to continue with the next step. So now we're going to separate the parts from the pickup tube. We're going to put some carb cleaner through it in all directions, followed by air in all possible directions. There are holes in this end, the other end, as well as on the sides. Make sure that all of the passages are clear. See on this side, there are also holes. On here is a long needle. This needs to be cleaned. Just make sure that there's no dirt. I use some metal polish on a piece of paper towel. Now we can see it's all bright and clean. And the spring as well, also clean with some cob cleaner. And just stretch it a little to make sure none of the coils of the spring are touching each other. That's all. And we'll wipe this spring off. Continue on to the next piece. And here's the burner, which we're going to separate now by unscrewing it. If we look inside, we'll see the screen with a sharp object. We could easily pull the screen from the burner bottom, at which point it could be unraveled. And then if necessary, cleaned with carb cleaner or mild acid like vinegar to remove any deposits from it. So here we have most everything from this stove completely disassembled for maintenance, inspection, and cleaning. I'm going to spray some cob cleaner in the cavity for the pump to remove any grime or buildup that's in there. This will then be dried out with compressed air. Everything here is clean, nice, and the check valve has been checked. If not, a special tool would have to be used to remove and replace it. Give this two quick blasts with REM oil just for rust prevention. I'm going to test an area on the side with metal polish to see how this polish is up. Yeah, it came out pretty good. I'm going to move over to the top, though. We're going to clean it first from the top, work our way down. This is just a degreaser cleaning agent to remove some of the dirt and grime. And this will be followed by metal polish. So we're going to spread this polish around and just polish this area the best we can. It's not a heavy amount of plating on the top, but just get a little shine out of it. Now I'll do the same thing on the sides, polishing that up, see how it buffs out. I'd say that came out really nice. Let's start the assembly procedure now. We'll load this spring back on. And then back into the tube. This should be cleaned out if obstructed. This one is not. So we're just going to screw it right back on like this, twisting it to full seat. And then with a wrench, just give it just a gentle tighten, gentle snug, just like that. The gas cap chain should be pre-positioned around the pickup tube. The pickup tube lowered as shown and then screwed on. Should be 180 degrees from the gas cap, so I'll turn it further. Then tighten down the gas cap. If the pump is in good condition, it can simply be cleaned. If it's in good condition, but the leathers dry out, many different oils are recommended. Motor oil, three-in-one oil, certain leather conditioners. I've had success with uh, three-in-one oil, even REM oil. But I'm going to place it right back in very gently. Like this, I use my fingernail to ensure that I could work it around to get the leather inside that ledge. It's not hard to do and just work it in. And then once that's done, it could be pushed right down 
to full seat. Then I snap the cover so that the screw hole lines up. The retaining screw is then inserted back into the pump. We'll do a really quick pressure test here. Just a couple of pumps, valve closed, gas tank closed. Very good. I'll be cleaning off the cleaning needle just like this in this direction as to not damage it. And then inspect it, make sure this is nice and clean. It seats onto the block just like this. I'll drop the cleaning knob back in just a turn or two to hold it into place. And the unit will be dropped in with the notch facing the cleaning knob. And then I'll start to screw in the cleaning knob until I feel it butt up against the brass piece. At which point I'll slowly lift the brass piece, wiggling everything back and forth until I feel it fall into that block. Then I'll keep screwing it in again. You can see it move up and down as I screw it until it's in full seat, tightening it with the wrench. Just a little nudge. Not too much. And then finally, we'll give it a little test. We can see it moves up and down. Very nice. The burner will be carefully placed over it as to not damage the cleaner. It goes straight down over to the threads. And then we turn down the nut to lock it into position. Showing here with the flashlight to cast a shadow, we could see the cleaner come up out of the hole. We can see zooming in. The shadow cast from the light, the cleaner coming, protruding from the hole, going back in. Everything works fine. We now lock this down with the wrench, very gently, a little snug. The knob is then put back on, along with the metal decal, pointed in the upper direction with the knob fully closed. The screw sets it in. Take one of our fitted screwdrivers and tighten it down. Adjusting so that that arrow on the decal points upwards as the screw is tightened. We open and then close. And we can see that it closes with the arrow at the 12 o'clock position. I'm going to hit this again one more time with the metal polish to remove any fingerprints or oil. Now I'm going to put a protective wax on here. I'm going to see if this is going to reduce fingerprints. I don't know if it's going to work, but it won't hurt. So we're going to try it out. Once dried, the wax is then removed. I don't know yet what benefit the wax has, but it looks good. So we'll go with it. These procedures will be repeated for the top portion of the stove. Q-tip is used to get the wax out of the lettering. Now we bring it all together. So here's what we got. Two more pieces have arrived from old Coleman parts. We'll get into that in just a moment. I'm gonna drop the outer pots in the dishwasher. You can see how much darker it comes out after a chemical reaction, possibly with the hot water and the soap. I finished off the left one with a green scrubby. The other side was done too, not to exhaustion. I'll probably use a drill with some sort of brush to clean these out much better than this. One thing that I picked up was a replacement funnel that clamps around the central tube. Its function is obvious. It fits directly into this filler hole and doesn't make a mess when you're adding fuel. The other is all but a necessity for this stove. It's the multi-purpose wrench. And the wrench is cut in such a way as it works for every single nut that you could find on here. All sizes will fit in this wrench. It's also the handle that turns the outer cases into both large and small pots. 
making it quite versatile. Okay, we're ready to test it out. This is not going to be a comprehensive test of performance. I'll make a video and post a link on the top right when that comes out. I'm using some of my older fuel for this test. We're going to fill it up at least halfway. Fasten on that fuel cap tightly. Wipe up the surrounding area. We'll go with about 25 to 30 pumps as written on the instructions. Turn the cleaner just a couple of times and put it in the down position when I'm done. It says turn this knob a quarter turn. Really anything an eighth of a turn past open is full blast, I found. So I'm just going to turn it a little bit, turn it on. If I turn a quarter turn, I'm really not going to get a whole lot of difference. But I'll do it anyway as follow the instructions. And we can see the flame is really high. But very quickly it will heat up, become less erratic, and come down. You can see it's already starting to drop. It heats up very quickly. It does also on the dial say to turn it all the way open. I find that this stove runs either off or full tilt unless you turn it just a hair past the on position or off position as it were. We can see that it's starting to come into its own. There might be a couple of yellow wisps since it's old fuel. But other than that, it's burning very nicely. You can see that further adjustments to open it up make absolutely no difference on the flame. Again, it's full tilt or just a crack open. Some might argue that using the cleaner will allow to bring it to a simmer setting. Uh, I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent. I think this is uh, beyond the scope of this video. We're just checking to see how the stove works. So I'm just going to run it in this mode. I'm going to close it back up to about right here. And you can see it's still running. I'm going to put this water pot on the stove now and let things get underway. Close up here shows a nice flame being produced under the pot. No doubt. A lot of energy. Very hot. The handle needn't be connected so it doesn't transfer heat from the pot. have another good look this time with the lights out and this is about as close as I get without melting the camera and as expected with this much power water boils without any effort whatsoever future tests will be conducted in another video the knob is turned to the off position almost immediately the blasting flame is extinguished leaving behind it a small gas flame from the vapor that's still in the upper end of the system. We see this again happening. This small flame can remain for quite some time. You could blow it out. It really doesn't matter. Unless, of course, you're walking away. Naphtha attracts moisture, so fuel should never be stored in these tanks. Because ultimately, it will lead to rust. The way this tank is designed, even draining it's insufficient. You can see as I shake it upside down, <laughs> more fuel keeps coming out. And even that doesn't drain it. You just can't get it all out. So you can leave the cap open, or you can pressurize it and push it from the top. As this will continue to run for several minutes after the fuel is drained from the fuel in the bottom of the tank, I couldn't get as long as I keep pumping it up to pressurize the tank. And then at some point, simply runs out of fuel. Hear nothing but a hiss of air. So we shut the valve, release the pressure, leaving the tank open to let it dry out. Well, that concludes this video on the teardown, maintenance, and rebuild of this antique Coleman 530 stove. I hope you found it informative, entertaining, and helpful. Click that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Click that subscribe button for notification of more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?